Welcome back to the Billy Meyer Books YouTube channel. For this video, Figu Groups, we're joined tonight with Vivian Legg, who is the president of Figu Landis Group A Australia. Welcome to the show, Vivian. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me. Vivian lives in Tasmania on some small acreage where she tends her nut orchard and garden. She first learned about Billy in 2002 from the movie Contact, which was uh, put out by Wendell Stevens. Soon after, she began to learn German. And then in 2003, she became a FIGU passive member of FIGU Switzerland. She started writing articles and translating with her partner at that time, Dyson Devine. And in 2009, she visited the Simyaze Silver Star Center in Switzerland. In 2011, she formed FIGU Landis Gruppe Australia with six other members. So let's get right into it. So Vivian, um, where exactly is FIGU Landis Gruppe Australia located at? Well, we don't, we don't really have a location. Our members are so few and so spread out across the eastern part of Australia that we just can't practically meet. Um, I'm down here in the southern island state of Tasmania, so I'd have to fly to meetings, which just isn't practical. Um, we have uh, three members um, who are in the southern state of uh, Victoria on the mainland, and um, we have one that's about an hour north of Sydney, and another three that are around the border of New South Wales and Queensland in the subtropics. Uh, so really... Wow, spread out. <laughs> and they're, they're all, you know, three or four hours drive apart. So it's just not practical. So uh, we don't have a home base, but once a year we do manage to meet um, in Victoria at the home of one of the members um, for uh, an annual general meeting. I see. And how often do you meet when it's not the general meeting? How often do you meet, uh, you know, for your regular meetings? Uh, so we have a monthly meeting, um, and that's uh, every every second Saturday of the month. We have a monthly meeting, and that's when we deal with most of our business. First and foremost, um, we have we have the, all the business to do with the the book production. Um, we're you know we. Uh, reprinting books at the moment rather than um, publishing them and we you know we we order them from Canada and the other people who are producing their own books uh, and sending our own books out it's quite a business um, you know quite a lot of effort goes into all of that the people who are involved um, we're also working on articles all the time that have to be discussed and translations translations mostly smaller ones at the moment um, we have a couple of ladies in Victoria who do an information stand um, that has to be sorted out and letterbox drops. So a couple of our members are involved in that. So there's quite a lot of business to do and that's, that's what the business meeting is for. Um, but on the same day, we have a, a, a meeting to discuss the spiritual teachings where we just get together and uh, read the texts and uh, discuss them and help each other learn. And that's also open to the public. So you don't have to be a member to come along to those meetings. Anyone who just just is respectfully interested is very much welcome to come and join us in those. Oh, wow, and then in great. the evening... Yeah, and if that's not enough, <laughs> in the evening we have uh, peace meditations, two 20-minute peace meditations, which are like, likewise uh, members of the public can join those um, if they're interested. Wow, that's great. Um, speaking of publications, what books or publications uh, have you published recently? Well, it's been a while since we did a book. Um, the most recent one is Introduction to Meditation. Uh, we're really spending most of our time at the moment working on smaller translations of the booklets. So you can you can see a long, long list of all the booklets we've done uh, recently. Um, you know, on, on, there's always new ones on overpopulation. Um, we we get the job of doing some of the translations of. Uh, of information that Billy and the Pliaran want out quite quickly to do with, uh, you know, we did a lot of the coronavirus translations, the advice about that, for instance, and very recently, uh, very recently, uh, a notice about the Pliaran 
not being the ones who are showing themselves around the place a lot and will not be. Uh, that was important to have out. So we do a lot of that kind of work um, rather than book publications. Um, but yeah, you can see you can see what we've done. It's all on the web page for exact um, brochures and so forth. Okay. And what about past publications? Did you cover that already, or is there some? What well, books have you um, done? I guess. Yeah. So we've done three main books. Um, okay. We started with Might of the Thoughts. Um, it, it's just a, a wonderful book to start with, in my view, because it, it you don't have to be uh, concerned about the history of the case. You don't have to be concerned about the extraterrestrial factor or the uh, you know the the or the teaching to do with religion specifically. This these books are just so so densely packed with a crystal clear teaching that just distinguishes itself from anything else you can you can find um, most of us have sort of had a bit of a look at teaching about meditation elsewhere and and about the might of the thoughts but it only goes so far and it's surrounded by other cloudy erroneous teaching and you get the feeling that you just can only get so far with it but this teaching is absolutely jam-packed with detail and really clearly understands um, how the consciousness works. So, you know, he deals with uh, neutrality, um, thinking um, the, the, the common idea about positive thinking is erroneous in that he explains that it's, it's really neutral thinking, seeing the positive and the negative totally neutrally. Um, and that's what creates the positive values that form our thoughts and so forth if we want that outcome in our lives. And it's, it's nothing to do with this exaggerated positivity um, where one just ignores any negatives as if they don't exist. So um, the other really important thing to mention that distinguishes this book is, uh, is explanations about the unconscious, um, uh, how it can actually create thoughts also that can defeat what you're achieving with your your conscious thinking so you know really as i say a really detailed in-depth quite difficult um study of the topic so that was the first book that we did okay uh, then we did the way to live <laughs> what a broad broad title and again it's just uh jam-packed with really dense explanations about all kinds of uh topics and you know I have a few that I could I could briefly mention if you ask someone else I'd come up with a whole different collection of favorite topics but for me it's teaching about uh, uh, the creation of law of striving everything strives the human being needs to strive even the creation itself strives uh, about the value of work about um, it being a creational function and not something to resent um, about the benefit of uh, having a duty to ourselves. So self-care, self -care, self-love, not trying to escape looking at ourselves through uh, distraction, through, um, you know, going off and involving ourselves in all sorts of amusements so that we don't have to look at ourselves. So self-love, self-care, self-responsibility. Um, and he and explains the kinds of different love, uh, the, the genuine reality-based love uh, versus false forms of love. Um, he talks about the uh, necessity to contemplate death as a part of life, our own death and the death of our loved ones so that we come to terms with it as a natural creational part of existence. And uh, he also has sections on meditation in this book. So if you only wanted to get one book or you only could afford to get one book, um, this one, I think, is terrific for all those reasons. It's just it's just so dense. And then there's all these proverbs of wisdom. You know, it's just jam-packed with proverbs of wisdom that make you think so many, so many things. So that was the second one that we published. And uh, then there's Introduction to Meditation. Um, I showed this book to a friend many, many, many years ago, a German, an older lady, a German friend, and I said, oh, I'd like to translate that one day. This is, you know, what I'd only been learning for a couple of years. <laughs> and she said, oh, no, that's far too difficult because it's difficult in even in the German language for German readers. That's, you know, that's how these books are. 
Um, but um, our German mem our German born member, uh, our secretary Vipka, she 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 was game. So she 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 started that translation, and others helped. And of course, we had Marianne in Switzerland and Billy helping as well through Marianne. So um, that one got done, and it again, it's just so so detailed and so so crystal clear, and, and he explains things that you never thought could have explanations, even even the you know that one thing you think is the one the silence of the consciousness during a meditation you think of it as being one thing. He manages to divide that up and explain its components. You know, I just marvel at it. Really, um, a brilliant read and quite quite. Uh, intense, te yeah, quite detailed. So those are the three we've done. That's outstanding. And not... What a great contribution to the English-speaking <laughs> world. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a pleasure. It's just, it's just, um, how could we do otherwise? Is the way I feel about it. You know. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, do you have any publications for the future? Maybe give us a little bit of insight of what may be going on now, what you're working on that may come out some point in the future? Well, we a couple of us are working on the second meditation book, but it's not officially our translation. It's it's the work of someone, the initiative of somebody, a uh, passive member in the United States, and someone in Germany is also working on that, another passive member. Um, so it's not actually our official project, and it remains to be seen who will end up actually publishing that because that's still probably, you know, quite a while before that one will be ready. Um, is that meditation from a clear point of view? Yes, it is. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah, so um, I can't I can't make any promises about what will happen with that one. Uh, we're sure. not planning any other book publications anytime soon. Um, that could all change because it really does depend on the initiatives of individuals, um, not necessarily members, members of the public who might turn up who've, who who are good at translating and who we can we can uh, check their work and perhaps publish. This thing, this sort of things can happen, but at the moment. Um, we just feel that our energies are best spent on things other than translations because groups like, I mean, Canada has done such a wonderful job at producing a whole lot of books and uh, there really are a very good collection, you know, of, of books out there for the English speaking world at the moment. There are many more, of course, as you can see, many of these have not been translated and I would love to be able to just hand them to everyone. But another factor is it's not just our, um, duty to create translations for the English speaking world. It's also our duty to encourage people to learn German. So, you know, arguably people still need a bit of an incentive. It's, it's, you know, it's, it, it's not for no reason that they recommend that that's what happens. Um, the English language is just not as precise as the German and, and uh, words and meanings are just so, so important given, you know, the power of the thought and so forth to, to guide our lives. Wow, that's what a great statement. <laughs> that's, it would be be nice if a lot more people would learn German. That would that would certainly uh, well, it would could help with translation, but it could also help with their own learning. The individuals, the individuals right. who's reading, right? And our our German born member Vibka, she spends she spent a lot of time uh, helping other people learn, very very patiently. <laughs> oh wow, that's great. Um, what other activities uh, does Figu Landis Group Australia do besides publication, besides translating and publications? Well, it's it's mainly the information stands and the letterbox drops. So um, the ladies in Victoria, um, they, they can go to the city of Melbourne, which is one of our two biggest cities. Uh, they can go there and they do their information stands there every couple of months in the warmer weather, um, except not these last couple of years because of the coronavirus situation. They thought it was better not to, um, even though they, they, they're they allowed to, but um, it's, it's sure. been, you know, not advisable. Um, and aside from that, yeah, so some people, it, it just those individuals who feel moved to do so are doing the letterbox drops where we are distributing um, the flyer about the peace, peace and the peace symbol. Um, that's really the main thing. We we haven't done any, we haven't attempted any lectures in public, um, any lately because it's just 
hasn't really proved to be practical. Um, there are just too few people and we're too spread out and you need to be in a capital city and, you know, um, the, the result of those tends not to be particularly good. It seems more productive to just keep on publishing on the internet because people can access the information that way. Sure. Yeah. Wow, great. Um, anything else you want to share with the audience about the uh, FIU Lenders Group of Australia? Oh, well, we're always looking forward for new sincere members. We, we had three join last year after having basically five active members for many, many years. Um, so that was a lovely development and it, it shows that, you know, the group can grow. So uh, there's really nothing, nothing more to explain. If you you know, if people are interested, you can approach us. You can uh, contact us via our web page. Um, oh, that's a great point. Uh, what is your contact information? How, how do people get a hold of you if they want to? Right. So the web page is au.figu.org. And when you go to our web page, you'll see a contact tab and you can follow the links there and you'll see that you can uh, write a message in a form and that will go to our secretary. And she'll respond to that. So if you want to inquire, you can have a discussion with Vipka and um, take it from there. And uh, she'll let you know what's going on and more detail if you want to know. But we're pretty, you know, we're, we're not many. And um, it, it's a lovely small group at the moment, but we'd certainly like to grow. <laughs> okay. Lo lovely in smallness in that we, it's, you know, we know each other well and, you know. It's um, easy That's to nice. use the internet with fewer people. <laughs> I'm, not quite, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen if we suddenly be get, become a lot bigger. But we'll yeah. see. Maybe, perhaps we'll divide into smaller groups or something. Well, as, as everything grows, there's always more challenges, right? <laughs> right. Exactly right. Just a natural process. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, that sort of winds it up for this episode of FIGU Groups. Uh, we've been so fortunate to be joined by Vivian Legg from... Uh, Figu Landis Group Australia, who is also the president of that group. Uh, thank you so much, Vivian, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you.